Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning's light our praise shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three person, blessed Trinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, we gather here on this Friday of the 13th week of Ordinary Time. Fridays, which are a day of penance, and also the first Fridays of the month when we remember the Sacred Heart of Jesus. As we gather here today, realizing that we have sinned, let us also turn to the most Sacred Heart of Jesus and beg for His mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The span of Sarah's life was 127 years. She died in Kiribathubah, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham performed the customary mourning rites for her. Then he left the side of the dead one and addressed the Hittites. Although I am a resident alien among you, sell me your holdings, a piece of property for a burial ground that I may bury my dead wife. After the transaction, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave of the field of Machpelah, facing Marmi, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. Abraham had now reached a ripe old age, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. Abraham said to the senior servant in charge of his household, who had charge of all his possessions, Put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and of earth, that you will not procure a wife, that you will not procure a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I live, but that you will go to my own land, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant asked him, What if the woman is unwilling to follow me to this land? Should I then take your son back to the land from which you migrated? Never take my son back there for any reason, Abraham told him. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and the land of my kin, and was confirmed by oath the promise he made to me, I will give this land to your descendants. He will send his messengers before you, and you will obtain a wife for my son there. If a woman is unwilling to follow you, you will be released from this oath, but never take my son back there. A long time later, Isaac went to live in the region of Nebuch. One day, evening, one day toward evening, he went out in the field, and as he looked around, he noticed that camels were approaching. Rebekah, too, was looking about when she saw him. She alighted from her camel and asked the servant, who is that man out there walking through the fields towards us? That is my master, replied the servants. Then she covered herself with her veil. The servants recounted to Isaac all the things he had done. Then Isaac took Rebekah into his tent. He married her, and he became, thus she became his wife. In love for her, Isaac found solace after the death of his mother, Sarah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can tell the mighty deeds of the Lord or proclaim all his praises? Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Blessed are they who observe what is right. 
who do always what is just. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of your chosen ones. Rejoice in the joy of your people, and glory with your inheritance. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come to me, all who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. He said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of these words. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The call of Matthew, the tax collector. It seems kind of a very simplistic thing. Obviously, Matthew must have heard about Jesus because Matthew was Jewish. The name of Jesus was being circulated about. People heard of him. They were intrigued by him. But can you imagine this man, obviously a tax collector, to him he knew he was an outcast from the Jewish people especially for the religious leaders of their day, because he was thought to be a cheat. Because most of the time, the tax collectors would probably take more money than they were supposed to from the Roman government and line their pockets, and that's why they were always rich. And also, he was considered to be a betrayer because he worked for the occupying government, for the Roman government, and was not fighting for the freedom of the Jewish people from the oppressive government. And Jesus walks by him and simply says, follow me. He gave up everything. He left that custom post behind and he started to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Perhaps it was because Jesus even talked to him or because when he looked at him, he looked at him with mercy. And Matthew felt that power, that mercy of God. And so, of course, Matthew then has all his friends, and his friends gather together there with Jesus. Now, they are a sinful bunch, like all of us are. And everyone else starts to gossip. Isn't that the funniest thing about human beings? We love to gossip. We love to see who is associating with who. And then we make these judgments about them. But Jesus doesn't care about our past. He only cares about our present and our future. And he tells very simply to the religious leaders of the day, go learn what these words mean. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Words that come from the scriptures themselves. So today, before we easily judge people and cast them aside, let us remember that Jesus came not to call the righteous, but he came to call the sinners. And that we are to look with people with mercy and compassion and help them along their journey of coming to Jesus, finding the Lord of life and saving their souls. Don't forget, you and I are sinners too. Perhaps there are some other righteous people out there who look at us and say, look who they are associating with. 
or even worse, look to somebody else, one of our friends, and say, look who they are associated with. None of us want to be judged by one another, for there's only one judge, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, let us offer our petitions to the Father who loves us unconditionally. That the church may flourish in the light of God's love and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That peace and kindness may be established through the power of the Holy Spirit in every part of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that we may be a people who are dedicated to human life, from the very moment of conception until natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us here may know the grace of knowing our eternal God and his love for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are suffering as a result of natural or man-made disasters, for those who are suffering with physical illness, for those who suffer with mental anguish or addictions, may they be relieved of their burden and know the love of God through his Son, Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God may obtain eternal happiness in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for your needs, your intentions that we bring to our Heavenly Father in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now take these prayers. We lift them up to our Heavenly Father. We pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father in heaven, hear these prayers and answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go, announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see.